Joe Biden and Donald Trump will square off in a crucial U.S. presidential debate that carries enormous stakes for both candidates. The prize they will be fighting for will be the approval of undecided voters and any slim advantage in their neck-and-neck -neck race to the White House. Both sides have agreed to a series of debate rules aimed at minimizing the prospect of a shouting match. There will be no studio audience and microphones will be cut out when candidates' speaking time is over. With only two debates, this election cycle and national polls showing the pair locked in the tightest of contests, the event at CNN headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, takes on heightened significance for many voters. Both contestants come with sizable handicaps. Sorry. President Biden as the oldest ever incumbent and Trump now a convicted felon. For Trump, an instinctive political populist, the challenge will be to rein in the aggressive tendencies he unleashed in their first chaotic debate four years ago. The 81-year-old Biden will be desperate to avoid any major gaffes that could underline concerns about his age. Biden has to focus on his key campaign message that Trump poses an existential threat to U.S. democracy. To coincide with the debate, both camps unleashed a series of fresh attacks ads. Trump's team took out TV spots accusing Biden of mismanaging the economy and encouraging illegal immigration. A more, in a morning post on his Truth Social platform, Trump argued that Biden was the real threat to democracy and a threat to the survival and existence of our country itself. The Democratic Party, meanwhile, paid five massive billboards in Atlanta, trolling Trump over his legal woes. Donald, welcome to Atlanta for the first time since becoming a convicted felon. Congrats or whatever, the sign said. Trump enjoys a slight advantage in, all, in the all-important swing states, but the overall polling looks extremely close to an election likely to be decided by a few photo. Finishes in a handful of battlegrounds now. The latest Quinnipiac University poll shows Trump edging ahead of Biden nationally, 49 percent to 45 percent. Biden has spent the last week at the Camp David retreat near Washington, fine-tuning his attack lines in mock debates under real TV lightning. Trump's preparation has been more relaxed, avoiding dress rehearsals in favor of informal policy roundtables and workshopping debate strategy with rally crowds. Aides have encouraged him to focus on his perceived strength on the economy and crime, while Biden will seek to paint Trump as unfit for office. Now, with this historic face-off mere hours away, let's give you a refresher on some basic rules of the engagement both men have agreed to. The President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will face off in a 90-minute debate. American broadcast channel CNN will be acting as host for the entirety of the debate. Uncharacteristic and uncharacteristically, no studio or a live audience will be present to witness and give live reactions. Both candidates will be given a pen, a pad of paper, and a bottle of water. Any other objects or props will not be allowed. A podium positions will be determined by the flip of a coin, wherein the victor gets to choose which side he stands. Now, no opening statements will be permitted by either leaders. Microphones will be muted throughout the debate, except for when the candidate whose turn it is to speak. Following each speech, the two leaders will have two minutes to answer questions, followed by a minute each for rebuttals and responses to those rebuttals. The debate will feature two commercial breaks. And during those two commercial breaks, staff from either leaders campaigning and tourage will not be allowed to interact with their respective candidate. It remains to see how many of these rules are respected and how many are tested. Now, for more on this, we are now being joined by our correspondent Susan Tenani from New York. It's good to see you, Susan. Now, how does it look like on ground, both the camps, red and blue? What does it look like on ground now? Well, we are less than 30 minutes away from this debate, an unusual debate, as you mentioned, with no studio audiences, microphones being muted. And then about an hour or two ago, we learned that even the White House press pool, meaning journalists from other networks, won't be allowed in the room during the debate either. 
One of the main concerns for CNN uh, was that there might be some kind of medical emergency, that they just left it at that. So that has caused some uproar, notably from the White House press corps. They released a statement. And also, you know, people online are a little bit frustrated because, you know, in journalism, we call this color. You want to get uh, the full picture of the room from various journalists, and that's not going to happen either. So we're going to be watching. Everyone is going to be watching from far away. During commercial breaks, some journalists will be allowed to go inside, and then they would have to come out and watch the debate later as well. It's rumored that CNN wants to give a one to two minute delay of airing of the debate as well. So, you know, these are just some of the logistics that people will be talking about, you know, days after the event. But ultimately, voters will be looking not only at the performances of these two men, but also whether or not they'll focus on policy and which of them can make their lives better. Talk about voters. Now, there is a part there, of course, people have decided who to vote and there are some undecided voters. How important do you think do they hold as of now looking at the first presidential debate? Yeah, it will be those undecided voters and it will be those black battleground states that will ultimately determine who will be the next president of the United States. Uh, as you mentioned, many have made up their minds. There are some experts that believe this debate so early on, uh, even before the conventions, isn't really going to move the needle so much. But there are those that are saying, and there was an AP poll that also mentioned, many voters, the majority of them, will be tuning in uh, at least some part of the debate and watching and seeing how these two men perform. So the undecided voters, absolutely, they are the most important. Usually they're more moderate than, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans. How these two men will perform ultimately, you know, are they going to make their decision tonight or are they going to still remain undecided?